Okay, we got this. Wow. All right. Hey, David, my check. One, two. All right. So we are streaming live from Little Rock, Arkansas. Okay, this is great. Now, if you want to stream, um, share this on your Facebook page, you can. But I'm going to go ahead and get started. And yeah, we're just going to let it flow. So what's up, everybody? It's the poet, the artist, the creator, and energy curator, Drika Wright and the Arkansas Arts Council Arts and Education Program Manager. And today we are tuned in for Art on Arkansas and we have the Solo Jackson with us today. So I'm super excited um, to get into this interview, but something that I just wanted to recap on before we get into the interview today, we did have Poetry Out Loud this past Saturday and our winner was Caitlin Doyne from Mills high school so if you know Caitlin Doyne if you see her out be sure to send her an encouraging message because she will be representing Arkansas in the nationals which will happen in May via Zoom so she gets a chance to compete for $50,000 in cash prizes for poetry so I'm super excited about that and today um, we have a recording artist with us so this will be interesting um, when we talk about prizes, the importance of art when it comes to music. So just to start off, I'll actually let you solo introduce yourself and just, you know, just tell us a little bit about you and your background and how you got started in music. All right, well, first off, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, I'm Solo Jackson. I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, born and raised Southwest or whatever. Um, <laughs> just full of transparency, I got into writing and music. Honestly, my mom, you know what I'm saying, she was always a radio personality. She was a radio personality for like 30 years, for Kissing 96, for uh, uh, 94.9 when they were a gospel station, for 106.7 Heartbeat. Uh, she she did a thing, you know what I'm saying? And she exposed me to a lot of music as a kid. And, you know, just being in those studios and being around all of that type of stuff, I guess it just eventually happened. Uh, but as far as me, like actually, you know, getting into it, I started writing in like 10th grade, trying to get it a girl. And uh, that just kind of, you know what I'm saying? It just kind of spiraled into, you know what I'm saying? Writing music and, became a rapper and you know recording artists and stuff like that so that's how I got here okay that's interesting so your art was inspired by some um uh, some muse okay so that that's super cool what high school did you go to solo I went to East End so yeah 2012 okay cool 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 so one of the biggest questions I always like to ask um is like, you know, what's it been like for you as an artist? Like, when did you really realize, like, this is for me, this is what I want to do. I can see myself doing this for a lifetime. Um, I get bored of things really easily. And like, once I'm bored, I'm, I'm over it. You know what I'm saying? I've done a lot in my short life. And music is the only thing that hasn't gotten boring. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's always something to learn. I feel like for me, the day I'll be done with music is the day I found all the right words to say. And you know, you never find all the right words. So um, yeah, like, you know, uh, between that and, you know, seeing my name in, uh, was it the Arkansas Times? Seeing my face and name in the Arkansas Times for the first time, or I guess kind of not that I needed it, but that outside validation where you, you got people who are, you know, kind of just, reaffirming to you that this can be done like you could do this and you know I've always been a dreamer um so yeah I just you know I've always been a dreamer so I, I would just imagine writing and performing all the time so it just kind of manifested oh that's so beautiful so how has it like really impacted your life do you feel like it, it's changed you or given you um an opportunity or different outlook on life? Has it saved you? How has it impacted your life? 
uh, I feel like it's definitely giving me purpose, you know. Um, I lived a different life a few years ago and my life was on the line, what seemed like every day, but it also didn't seem like I was gonna have a purpose and I felt like I needed to have a kid to have a purpose. So I had to do this, that, and the third to have a purpose. And uh, music is one of those things that it just showed me that I didn't, I didn't have to go that far to have purpose. Mm. Um, it's just, yeah, it's, it's my life, man. It's, I don't know, it's, it's magical, you know what I'm saying? To be able to wake up every day and just make music and change somebody's life, you know what I'm saying? off a of thought, you know what I'm saying? You think words, you write them down and you type them, then you put them in this microphone over some sounds, you make it music. You know what I'm saying? Like, to really yeah. break it down. It's Look, I'm glad you said it like that. You made it sound like it's just so simple, but I say this all the time. I think people who are able to write and like, you know, weave words together in a way that like really cause people to feel like that's really a superpower like it's a magical thing and I feel like when you got that talent and it comes so natural it seems like it's an easy thing to do but it's really not like it's it's literally I believe it's my personal belief that that is a superpower to be able to move somebody with your voice and with your words so I definitely like that I mean um, yeah. So what are some highlights you've had thus far? Some highlights of your career, some pivotal moments. Man, um uh, highlights of my career. All right, well, first time I came to LA. Uh, um yeah, the first time I came to LA, you know. It was just crazy to be able to think that like of two songs at the time got me all the way across the country. Like I never dreamed of coming to Los Angeles. I never dreamed of doing any of this, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. and I did offer, like I said, the strength of words. Um, I guess another one would be uh, opening up for Dave East um, in, in Denver one time. It was a sold out show and me and the homie opened up for him, you know what I'm saying? Also from Arkansas, he's from Palm Bluff. We opened up for him in a sold out show. And what was really crazy for me was right before I go on stage, I get a phone call from a number that I didn't recognize. So I didn't answer it. And then I'm like three steps away from the stage and I get a phone call again. And I still didn't answer it. I'm literally putting my phone you know, back in my pocket as I'm walking on stage. And for whatever reason, I pulled it out one more time and it was my cousin. And he was calling me from prison. And at that time I hadn't talked to him in like six years. And I just thought, you know, the, the synchronicity of like my first sold out, not my show, but like my first time performing for a sold out show. And like my best friend, my brother, my cousin, you know what I'm saying, calling me at the same time. Like, and I, like I said, I hadn't talked to him in so long. I was like, dang, like that's, that's gotta mean something, you know what I'm saying? There's two very big moments. And then I guess, you know, cause I could go all day, but I guess for the most part, uh, you know, my mom's reactions, you know what I'm saying? To any time I do something, she can never, I don't know, she probably just be playing and like, you know, trying to hype me up, but she's always like, I don't know how you remember all those words, you know what I'm saying? So anytime I drop something new or anytime she hears something from me and I get her response from it, you know what I'm saying? Like that's mom, you know what I'm saying? So to have her like behind me and in full support is dope. So I appreciate that. So those are a few of my like highlights for sure. Mm -hmm. Also, matter of fact, one more. My great niece, she's three years old. She knows the lyrics of my <laughs> I think that's pretty dope. So. Aw, that is so precious. But yeah. I want to kind of go back to what you were saying when you went on stage and you got a call from your cousin. Do you feel like, feel like they gave you like a different energy when you went out there? It did, you know what I'm saying? And at the time I didn't really know how to like live in the moment as I do now. Cause if I did, I definitely would have like doubled down on that. You know what I'm saying? Like that was a very big moment. And even though I was super nervous and super anxious, you know what I'm saying? I could have built off of that. I mean, I, I did build off of just the fact that like, you know what I'm saying? Like my man just called me and just when you, when people who know what I've gone through and what my cousin's gone through and even like what Dave East has gone through, it's like, 
like I said, it's just synchronicity, you know what I'm saying? And um, when you talk about impact, that's the type of stuff you live for, you know what I'm saying? To be able to be an inspiration to him and all the other little kids in my family and stuff like that, it's like, it's dope. And that definitely changes the way you see the artistry, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it'll be what takes you from, from a hobbyist into taking it seriously, you know what I'm saying? So, right. Yeah. Okay. And I just want to take a moment for everybody that is watching. If you could go ahead, like, share, comment. If you have any questions or comments you would like to drop, you can definitely drop it in the comment section and I'll read it out. So um, please feel free to engage and please share because you never know who you could bless with just sharing a simple video. But thank you all for tuning in again. So David, I've seen you perform solo. I, I've seen you perform before. And it was at Vino's Pizza, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. 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 And I really feel like you had you got you got an energy that's really infectious. Like you got a presence, a strong presence. So um, my question to you is when you do perform, where do you go? Where do you go in your mind? Like how do you channel that energy to be able to communicate what you've written in a way that is received by the audience? Mm. Honestly, you know, <laughs> in the beginning, I was just kind of like black out, you know what I'm saying? Just black out, you know. Uh, I don't really have, well, yeah, like it was just black out. I would just go there and do what I, you know, yell into a mic and people liked it. You know what I'm saying? But in over time, uh, people don't, people have a negative connotation to the word ego, but ego is your personality. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's who we all are. It's nothing wrong with having ego. And I think sometimes you got to turn the ego on. You know what I'm saying? Like, one thing I had to remember was I'm not, this is not a facade. This is who I really am. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like you have to do too much. Um, and understanding that the people came to see you, you know what I'm saying? Like these people came and they paid money to see a show. They obviously are, you know, here to see you and other people on the bill, given what they came to see. Also understanding that like moving with purpose and moving with intent and intention and stuff like that. You just kind of understand that like I'm of service. That's the, that's the biggest way to give back is to be of service. And so just kind of understanding like taking myself out of it is like somebody may need to hear this. So this might do something for somebody else. And if I can be the medium by which they receive that, you know what I'm saying? I'll be that. And so just kind of, like I said, just being aware of that. Like people came to see you because you have something to say and right. they didn't want to hear you. They, they walk off or they wouldn't come. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> that would be nice so okay I hear a lot of artists talk about the alter ego like you know Beyonce she has Sasha, Sasha Fierce and um, they talk about like really really becoming somebody else but you know what I've heard you say is your ego is your identity and it's an extension of who you already are so yeah. I like that I definitely like that so Again, we are here to talk about like art and education, but it is Women's History Month too. So before I get into those questions, who is your favorite female artist? My favorite female artist, man. Or you can give us some that inspire you. Uh, I mean, straight up, like uh, just on a bigger scale, you got people like Rhapsody, you got people like uh, Tierra Wack as far as like hip hop goes. And you know, shout out to all the women in hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Um, but if I'm gonna be listening to two of them for sure, Rhapsody for sure, uh, Tierra Whack. Um, Tina Marie, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, uh, uh, I'm going blank right now. My mom would be really mad, but uh, <laughs> even like, um, uh, as far as gospel goes, like Moret Brown Clark, like I got to meet her when I was like a, a young dude and, she was one of my favorite gospel singers, Yolanda Adams, the Clark sisters, Kiki shit, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then, you know, we talked about it before, you know what I'm saying? Like, as far as like, when you think about from like home, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I really rock with what you do, you know what I'm saying? As a poet, as a, as a wordsmith. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, I'm so emotional, hold on. Too loud, too loud. 
But yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying? Shout out, shout out to all the women, you know what I'm saying, the music, shout out to all the women in the arts. Uh, shout out to Carrie James. Like, it's just a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I heard you name a lot. That was definitely that was a unique mix, first of all, too. So I think you went from rap to gospels. <laughs> yeah, like, I like the diversity. No, nah, for so, real. Like my mom had me listening to so many people that wasn't, you know, that weren't hip hop, that wasn't you know, secular or pop culture music, but I had a huge influence, you know what I'm saying? To see a woman playing the drums, the drums is always my favorite instrument. To see a woman playing the drums, not saying that women never could, but like being a kid seeing that, it's, it's insane, you know what I'm saying? It's like, she gotta be an anomaly or she just raw, you know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah, and that's all y'all. You know what, I agree, that, that's a woman for you, women are dope. So, uh, well, actually, what is who are some of your favorite male artists? Some of my favorite male artists, man. Uh, of course, as far as hip hop goes, Kendrick Lamar, in no particular order, Jay Z, Nas, you know, Dave East. Uh, uh, favorite male artist, Tank, Chris Brown. Uh, All right. <laughs> I'm trying to think of, uh, yeah, see, now, now you got to get me, I got to get the phone out, you know? Wait, I, I actually want to make this spicy, so give us your top five in order. Top five? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, top five in order. Let me, I'll give you a little time to think. So, no, no. blessings from Celeste. She said, blessings. Markel said, my peeps. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Everybody that's still tuned in again, if you have any questions that you would like to pose, you can drop it in the comments. You can comment um, anything, nothing mean though. Um, and you can share this video because you never know who you might bless. But Solo is about to give us his top five. Top five. Top five. All right. In order. <laughs> for sure. Jay Z. Lamar, J. Cole. You didn't say rapper, so bet. Uh, James Fonleroy. If you don't know who James Fonleroy is, you gotta look him up. Wow. And then yeah, Chris Brown, man. I could switch out Chris Brown and Tank for one another, but yeah, one of those like that's it. That oh no, that huh? sounds kind of out of order. No, nah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> J. Cole should be at the top. So Celeste asked, does he have formal training or all God given talent? I love Patty LaBelle. <laughs> I love Patty. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. Like you got, <laughs> you got Patty LaBelle. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's impossible to name all of the dope women, you know what I'm saying, in music. Like I'm sorry, my if you ever see this. Um <laughs> uh so yeah formal training of god given talent this is this is god you know what i'm saying like um if we're gonna keep it real um writing taught me how to speak it taught me how to talk it taught me how to communicate you know what i'm saying it's something i'm still working on but i've never in the past i wasn't a good um as far as like problem solving and conflict resolution, I wasn't a speaker, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not talking about that, you know what I'm saying? I'm a swing, I'm gonna be upset about it, you know what I'm saying? It's just gonna be a problem, so. Silent treatment. Yeah, or silent treatment for sure. Like, yeah, I can just get quiet, I'll just shut down, you know what I'm saying? And um, that's not, it's not cool, it's not, it's not, I'm not easy to deal with when I used to be like that, you know what I'm saying? And so, Writing definitely taught me how to get it out of here and get it off my heart and to put it on paper or to put it elsewhere. And then, you know, once you get past it and you grow from it or whatever, mm -hmm. you look back on it, you realize sometimes the situation wasn't as deep as you thought it was, or it wasn't as bad as you thought it was. And once you finally do come to a solution, you realize talking about it sometimes would have saved you like a, a lot of time and a lot of frustration, a lot of miscommunication. So writing definitely taught me how to, you know what I'm saying, use my words in a very literal sense. Um, oh, wow. It's helped me say things. It's kind of crazy in the past. I would say things on wax that I would never say to a person, like a person I cared about, a person like 
um, person that hurt me, I would never say these things to these people, but now you feel me, uh, I can, you know, I can communicate a little bit better, so, yeah. Well, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know, I feel like I should send you a balloon. That's a big <laughs> thing, communication is, is hard. So I think it's, it's really cool when an artist, you know, a lot of times people on the outside looking in, they're like, oh my God, you're just able to articulate yourself so well. But people right. don't realize sometimes it's easier to put it on paper and perform it than it is to like communicate it directly to people. I feel like writing, in a sense, it for me, it allowed me to hide and not like pretend like I was not connected to my words. Like mm -hmm. when I would write something, I was like, yes, yeah, this is not about me whole time it was now I do write things that may not be about me but I've experienced it in a way that's allowed me to have insight to be able to write about it but again um writing is a safe place too no absolutely absolutely you know when you think about when you hear sometimes when you hear a record and you you wonder where it came from you know what I'm saying you like where did you go or how did you what did you go through or like how did this happen Sometimes it's, it's a spiritual situation, you know what I'm saying? I know that sounds a bit dramatic, but it's been times, you know what I'm saying? You write a rap, you write a song, and you listen to it, and you're like, where did this even come from? You know what I'm saying? I found myself asking myself that a lot. Like, where did this come from? You know what I'm saying? Like, this amount of emotion or this, this articulation, you know what I'm saying? Like, where did this type of stuff come from? And I do believe uh, writing in any form of art can be very spiritual, very healing, very therapeutic. So, you know. It's the cheapest wow. form of therapy. <laughs> straight, up, straight up, I got plenty of notebooks, so. Yeah. Right, you might have to bring one out so you can share something with us. Nah, man. <laughs> oh, we have to pay for it, my bad, I'm sorry. Yeah, nah, man. <laughs> hey, so, hey everybody that's still tuned in. Scarlett Sims asks, can we talk about the inspiration behind Solo's work, his writing and music, and how social justice issues have played into his process, specifically in the past year, back Black Lives Matter and COVID? Word. Uh, dang, shout out Markel. That's the homie. Okay. And shout out to Celeste for the questions. And Scarlett, inspiration behind my work. Um, so yeah, I mean, I just write about myself, you know what I'm saying? I, I uh, similar to what Drika was saying, even if you haven't been through it, you were close enough to have been able to gather something from that, you know what I'm saying? I've always made it a point to speak from a very honest place, um, as honest as I can, you know, be with myself and of course be with others. Um, yeah, it's just about my life, you know what I'm saying? Everything is in my life, you know what I'm saying? From the early on stuff to even now, it's just, my life in the past i will admit that i used to think to be tight to be impactful it always had to be dark and frustrated and angry and things like that but now with a lot of healing and a lot of you know uh unlearning and learning you know what i'm saying it don't it don't gotta be that way um as far as like social justice issues paid into this process um yeah, you know, in the early days, I was very charged up emotionally about, you know, police brutality and treatment of, it was, it's such a nuance, you know what I'm saying? Just like how, you know, we get treated, but it wasn't so much from outside. It's my own personal experiences with cops, you know what I'm saying? Like being pulled over and being yanked out of my car and being, you know, threatened to be arrested for some expired tags, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, or having a gun put to my face in front of my mom at home, you know what I'm saying, by the cops. And I'm a veteran, you know what I'm saying? Like these kinds of things are happening to a veteran, but because I didn't look the part or whatever the case, you know what I'm saying? They just felt like they could treat you any kind of way. Um, so it just, like I said, it just comes from a very um, personal standpoint. As far as social justice goes and how I see it, you know, moving forward, Everybody has a role to play. We all soldiers, you know what I'm saying? Um, some people's role is to be outside and be front lines for real, which I'm with that, I'm with that for sure. 
Uh, some people's role is to uh, to talk about it, you know what I'm saying? So if you're a writer in whatever capacity that means, you write about it. Some other people's forms are, you know, provide as a distraction to decompress in these kinds of times. You know, last year was very, uh, it was tense. You spent the whole year tense. You got a global pandemic, you got, you know, people being murdered, black people being murdered every day by cops. Um, and then now it's being even more televised than, than usual. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, sometimes we gotta learn how to decompress. And I don't think a lot of people ever knew how to do that. You know what I'm saying? You wake up every morning, you're on Twitter, you're on Instagram, you're constantly being charged up from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep by violence. And that builds up a lot of tension in your body and anger and your spirit and resentment for the next man. Um, so yeah, you know what I'm saying? When you got people like athletes and you got other entertainers, even musicians who use their, their talents and their gifts as a means of a distraction to, like I said, decompress when, after a long day of being charged up, you know what I'm saying? Life can get very real. So um, that, you know, all of that. And then specifically with Black Lives Matter and COVID, yeah, you know, last year we had to think a lot about dropping music during certain times because timing is everything and optics, you know, you can be, you could have good intent, but you know, Sometimes the public might not see it the same way. They might see it as insensitive or tone deaf and read the room became a really good uh, coined phrase last year. You know, I start to see it as like, if your intention was to help heal, if your intention was to help bring awareness to, if your intention was to help keep, you know, people outside motivated and inspired, then by all means do what you gotta do. You know what I'm saying? It all is always about the intention. If your intention is right, you can never be uh, misquoted. You can never be misunderstood and can never be misinterpreted. So, right. I love uh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I said exactly. Oh, she so said exactly right. to people, you know, knowing their role in the movement. So, let's say thank you for your service. Um, and something I want to go back to that you spoke on about decompressing. Now, we talked before and you talk about like the different practices you have in place. Um, you kind of touched on how, you know, when we wake up, we're taking in all of this stimuli and it's like, you know, building up inside of us. So I want to talk about like the importance of like us being mindful of what we consume with our eyes and our ears, because I say this all the time, you know, you have to be mindful of that because it really affects how you think, feel and behave. So I kind of want you to talk about what, like your, your kind of, your practices, you know, with the music, the hurts and- Yeah, so first off, independent thinking. So even to go back to the social justice that Ms. Sims, uh, Ms. Sims was talking about, independent thinking, you know, when you start to do your research on a lot of what's going on outside, it's meant to provoke an emotional response. Mm. And if, this person is mad, and this person is mad, this person's gonna find a reason to be mad. They don't even know what they're mad about, they're just mad for the sake of being mad, it's a scapegoat, you know what I'm saying? And with the media and the consumption and overconsumption of media and this, that, and the third, everybody gets so charged up and you don't even know you're being charged up, but your, your diet from what you can, you know, you're seeing, what you're hearing, what you're saying, what you're receiving from other people, you know what I'm saying? Your body is sensitive to that type of thing. And I feel like sometimes given the environments in which we grow up, we, we get a little desensitized to it. And I think that's something we should always maintain a, a sense of presence within. So um, independent thinking, man, like I don't, you know, as far as like the Black Lives Matter movement, and I know this might be a taboo, but I'm gonna say it. You know what I'm saying? I think for myself, this wasn't for an organization or anything like that. What I saw, I didn't like, I did something about it. Mm -hmm. um, and I would, I would hope that more people were doing things like that. Instead of trying to, you know, come up off of a movement or come up off of uh, the, the misfortune of other people, understanding seeing something is wrong and doing what you feel like you can't do about it. Um, as far as what I do, as you can see, I closed the window so we could, could hear each other, but it's birds chirping. I got plants in here, you know what I'm saying? I got my, my puppy right behind me, he knocked out. Uh, 
I keep plenty of sunlight around me at all times. You know what I'm saying? Part of my reason for still being in Los Angeles is because it's sun all the time. I gotta be outside. I gotta charge up with the sun. Um, uh, exercising, physical motion, you know what I'm saying? Being from the country, I spent a lot of time outside. You know what I mean? Like to not be able to go outside is a problem for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I gotta spend my time outside and breathing in fresh air and Solitude, you know what I'm saying? My silent treatments back in the day came from solitude being my number one, you know what I'm saying? My name is Solo for a reason. Um, but even in over some more, like I read a lot behind me. I got plenty of books that I worked on reading and I'm in the process of reading. I read a lot, you know what I'm saying? I try to ingest something new every day. Um, I'm actually working on Seven so Spiritual Laws of Success right now. I highly suggest that one. Um, I read, I write, I'm, I'm, I, I'm quiet. I try to, you know, I pray a lot, I pray all day, just for Thanksgiving, you know what I'm saying? Not asking for anything in particular, just saying thank you. Um, frequencies, yeah, in the mornings, and sometimes all day, I just listen to frequencies, you know what I'm saying? To go sleep, to wake up, 528, 432, just positive frequencies that induce, you know, peacefulness and help you manifest and keep you in a great headspace. And then you can also look up in regular music, you know what I'm saying? Like what key this song is in. And then when you look up what key that's in and you understand like how music hits certain parts of the spirit, how it always hits certain chakras, if you uh, subscribe to those kinds of things. I, I, try, I, pay, I pay attention to all that kinds of stuff. And I just try to remain present in all situations, you know what I'm saying? And that just helps me, you know, as a person, it helps me as an artist, keep a clear mind and keep an open heart, open spirit, everything. So it's part of my process. You know what? That sounds real peaceful. It is, man. Like I'm I'm calm now because of you. So <laughs> <laughs> Alexa Pickett said, what's the best practice in your opinion when trying to embrace solitude more? I like that. Um, hey, Alexa. It's the best practice in my opinion. I'm trying to embrace solitude. Um, you know, they say it's something to be said about a person that can't be alone, by, you know, that can't be alone. Uh, without judgment, you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, if you enjoy being around people, there's nothing wrong with that. I would just say be mindful of the people that you, you know, surround yourself with. If you're always surrounded by people who support you and love you and don't judge you and things of that nature and who have your best interests in mind, then by all means. But at the end of the day, for certain people like myself, being introverted, you know, having dealt with certain levels of anxiety, you just kind of need that time to yourself to recharge, to recenter, to refocus. You know, uh, it's fun being with your homies. It's fun being with loved ones and things of that nature. I just think for myself, I like being quiet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just really like being quiet and sitting alone with my thoughts, addressing. I've never been like a runner in that way. I guess as far as like my lack of communication back in the day, but that would be the only thing I would consider. But as far as like dealing with my issues and things of that nature, I kind of try to see them head on. So uh, I sit alone, you know what I'm saying? I sit alone and I deal with whatever it is that I'm going through. I figure out why I'm feeling this way and what I can do about it. And if I can do something about it, I do it. And if I can't, then I figure out what I can learn from it. But being in solitude, man, it, it's great. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. <laughs> you sound like good. Okay. Um, Patrick Rogers. Hey, Patrick. He said some of my favorite people. What's up, Pat? My boy. Alexa, there is a lot to learn in silence. Yeah. It is. And that's when you know that, when you know that there's a lot to learn in silence, it should be more, you know what I'm saying? It should be a little, little bit easier to embrace that solitude. And solitude doesn't have to be for an extremely long time. It ain't like you got to go out for a week in the middle of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Just sitting in your car, sitting in, your, in a space that you consider to be safe. Mm -hmm. So I agree with that. So how do you, so for people who do like to have that time alone and go like into extended periods of solitude like how do you communicate that with other people do you communicate it with other people how do you make other people understand so it doesn't seem like you're so it's two ways different. you can just come out and say it you know what i'm saying 
understanding that like at the end of the day, me needing what I need has nothing to do with you. I feel like a lot of times people are self-centered and uh, entitled, right? So uh, if you do care to explain to people why you want to be by yourself, just tell them like, yeah, I just need some time. And if they fuck with you or my bad, if they rock with you, they'll respect that. You know what I'm saying? They'll respect it. And if not, then that's not somebody you need around you. Uh, on the other side is you don't owe anybody an explanation for anything. You know what I'm saying? People feel entitled to your energy, to your time and things like that. And at the end of the day, you don't owe them that. You know what I'm saying? I think you got to do what's best for you. So if you just decide you, I do it all the time. I pick up and just leave. I don't tell nobody. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't owe anybody anything. Now people will project certain things on you. Like you need to tell somebody so we know where you at. That's a projection of your own fear. That has nothing to do with me if you want to take it there. But also, you know what I'm saying? I understand too, especially for women, this world is a lot more dangerous for y'all than it is for, for a man. So I understand that. So, but for anybody, like I said, who needs to, to duck off, just do what you need to do, man. At the end of the day, nobody gonna have your back like you got your back. So mm-hmm. you know, and do what you need to do. Get what you need. That's, I like that you said that um, my friend, oh yeah, she is on here. She said people feel entitled to your energy and your time. And something she always says too, um, she says things like, you know, give what you can. And if you don't got it to give, then that's okay. So absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Before anything is important. At the end of the day, you know, like I said, for me, I want to be of service. And I can I can't be of service to you if I'm not good. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm feeling low, or if I'm feeling down, or if I'm just not feeling like it's not fair, you know what I'm saying? If I can't give you my best, then that's not fair to you. And you gotta, you gotta let me go do my thing for a second. You know what I'm saying? Let me duck off, let me recenter, because sometimes if you catch a person spazzing out. It's not because of anything you did. They just reached the limit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's nothing personal. But sometimes people just need space. You know what I'm saying? Some people need more space than others. And so, like I said, at the end of the day, you do what you got to do. People that, 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 that care for you genuinely, because that's another thing. A lot of people tell you they care for you as long as it serves them. Wow. You know what I'm saying? As long as it serves them, they'll care for you. Do what you need to do for yourself one time and see how they respond. You know, well, I think so. you might need to pass a collection plate on this here internet. Nah. That's the word. <laughs> yeah, man. It's very real. So yeah. Man, that's all good. Yes. So I kind of want to take it back to the old days, as some people would call it. I wanted to talk about um high school and like what was your experience like with coming into your artistry? Um, I remember us being a part of the kosher music group. Like, how was that whole experience of like really tapping into it? Well, yeah. So back then, I ain't gonna lie. I didn't know who I was. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know who I was at 17 years old. I didn't know who I was at 18. I came from an environment where. You know how like you got your parents and then you got society, right? You got family and you got outside world. Your parents can tell you something, your family and your loved ones can tell you stuff all day. But for whatever reason, sometimes we tend to listen to outside. So, you know, I listened to outside and outside was convicts and, you know, criminals, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to to the homies, everybody did what they felt like they had to do, but that's what I was around, you know what I'm saying? Like just around some rough stuff. And so in high school, I didn't know who I was, man. And uh, early in writing, I would, um, it just wasn't, it wasn't me, you know what I'm saying? But learning that process, being around a bunch of dope people, it helped, it motivated me to, to really dig deep into, you know what I'm saying, doing like finding myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying like, like I said, when you when you tight, you just tight. But like, and you want to be tight with everybody else. You like you see what they do over there. It's like I really want to be a part of that. I really want to be a part of that. And you, I learned in high school, you can't take shortcuts. You know what I'm saying? It'll come back to bite you. 
and it's just not as fulfilling. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's something I had to learn on my own. But what was the second half of the question? There was another part. I'm trying to think of it. Like, say it one more time. Audience, if you remember the second part of my question, could you drop it below? Because I do not recall. Um, Jasmine Blunt, she gave us an emoji. Hey, you, Nika, thank you for tuning in to Alexa. I see you still here. Um, the second part of that question was, I mean, just how it was for you coming into your artistry. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, like I said, you know, um, yeah, just like I said, being around all of y'all and just being in a place like East End that helped us blossom, you know what I'm saying? They helped us, they really embraced the arts in that way. Even though it was a STEM school, the technology and being able to use yeah. technology. <laughs> uh, you so said, yeah, we had a studio. Remember, the news station donated us all the studio equipment. Yeah, like we, we really were down in the basement, like, you know, keeping up a racket all day. But um, yeah, that just that just inspired me to just go harder, you know what I'm saying? Because there were five musicians that Pat, Patrick Rogers, like you'd be down there playing the piano all day, just making it look easy and be like, yeah, that's nothing, you know. It's like, yo, I want to be that raw. And then, like I said, you with poetry and spoken word, it's like, yo, this is so tight. And I was just here, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that that time really like looking back on it, I was like, glad that I experienced that and glad I got to see that. And glad I was able to step out on faith and, you know, duck off and do what I needed to do to be able to find myself in music. And I did. And I feel like that was, you know what I'm saying? People like sometimes regret things and sometimes are embarrassed of their past. It's part of it. That's just what made you who you were. So yeah. it was fun. You know what I'm saying? You no, know, I feel like all great artists have a story. So if I'm ever going through something, I'm like, oh, this must mean. I'll be somebody in the future. <laughs> this is going to be part of the documentary. That's what I'm, I have to say. <laughs> that has to be. And then on top of that, when you understand it, like when you're finding yourself in a storm, I feel like we go through things over and over again, just in different ways, until we figure out the best way to deal with it, the best way to, you know, you know, just resolve whatever issue it is. Um, and I feel like right before something great happens, something bad has to happen. You know what I'm saying? It's all subjective. So it's not necessarily bad. It's an opportunity to learn. It's a learning opportunity. It's an opportunity to grow if you are able to acknowledge it. And if you're able to acknowledge it, you can, you can beat it. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes down to going through things and being like, dang, I'm really going through it or whatever the case is, like, oh, I'm going through it because I'm built for it. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and... I got something, it's something on the other side waiting for me if I can just pass this test. And literally acknowledging it is half the test. Because once you've acknowledged it, you understand that you're in a test. Right. And then do what you know you need to do instead of, you know, reverting back to the old ways and so. Exactly. Yeah. So everybody that's still tuned in with us, please drop any comments, you know, feel free to interact with us, use those emojis, send us some hearts, some thumbs up. Um, or if, if we say something funny, you can definitely laugh but um please share this video paradox i will get to your question here in just a second so while we're on the um topic of learning and growing i have a friend carissa rogers uh, she wrote in her book she said planted not buried and it made me look at life so much differently it's like you literally do have to change your perspective and when you change your perspective like it really can um give you a different energy toward life because if you think about that planted not buried when you're buried it's like it just I, when I think about being buried I think about the dead just being buried and I see overlooked but when you think about being planted you know planted in the ground buried in the ground like those two different things you know when you're planted it's an opportunity for growth you're ex expecting something to come out of it and when you look at life with that perspective of being planted with the possibilities of growing and being something bigger than you ever imagined, then it changes your attitude and your outlook on life, which I feel is one of the most important things to be able to move forward. So um, I like that. Absolutely. And when it also too, you know, when it comes to being, you know, 
I think you hit the nail on the head. You're working, you know what I'm saying? That's that's a work in progress. You know what I'm saying? When you think about even us reaching our fullest, you know, potential, that's planted within us. It's not buried. It's gonna show itself unless you don't do the work. In which case, if you die without reaching your full potential, then yeah, you you, you buried that. But as long as you keep living and you waking up every day, striving towards that same greatness, that potential is just being, it's planted. And every day when you reach a new height, when you go a little harder, when you, you know, accomplish something new, that's a new sprout. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, y'all can't see it, but I got, I got two birds of paradise plants. I got a Monstera Deliciosa. I got a, a red banana plant. I got aloe vera plants. I got snake plants. You know what I'm saying? They're not buried they're planted and as long as they're watered and they're doing the work that they're supposed to do every day the photosynthesize and this then the third you get new sprouts and i get new sprouts what seems like every week you know what i'm saying so i look at these plants and i look at you know like i said this puppy that's behind me asleep mm -hmm. it's all potential you know what i'm saying you got potential energy kinetic energy being planted is potential energy you bloom and you blossom when you turn that potential into kinetic energy. You dig what I'm saying? So it's just like, um, just work. I believe I'm a little bit in physics, so thanks. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, I didn't even go that far. No, no, that was good. That was good. Oh yeah, I said you sound so balanced. Love it. Buried dead. Planted new life experiences. Come on, somebody. So let's positive energy. Yeah. All right. Um, now I'm going to ask this question from Paradox. She said, you said you write about yourself and your experiences. What specific experiences have influenced your writing and artistry the most? That was a good question. Uh, what specific experiences? Well, like I said before, you know what I'm saying? Uh, there's a song that I released a couple years ago called God Knew. And uh, God knew my heart when I was down in the dark. That's why he didn't, that's why I didn't get arrested when them folks saw the jar. That's why the gun didn't go off when it was up to my jaw. In these waters, you can't be dolphins and act like a shark. And that was literally from the night where uh, a cop pulled a gun in my jaw, in my driveway. You know what I'm saying? Like, it changed. I already never really did like the cops just because of my, where we grow up, you know what I'm saying? But that experience considering, like I said, it's like, I wasn't doing anything wrong. Uh, I had a gun in the car. It was my gun, I'm registered. I'm also a veteran. You did you know what I'm saying? Like I, I posed no threat and it was no, either way, those kinds of experiences. Uh, there's another song, one of my favorites called Villain. Uh, Villain is about the loss of innocence. You know what I'm saying? My cousin that's locked up, was one of my favorite people. He still is super funny, super charismatic, you know, kind-hearted dude. I don't know what his case is about, but he's doing 25 years. And at one point does your hero turn to your villain or turn to a villain? Somebody, you're always gonna be a bad person in somebody's eyes, you know what I'm saying? Wow. That, that person in the eyes of the law and in the eyes of whoever was victimized, is a, is a bad person. It's also the person that taught me how to fight, taught me how to play basketball, taught me how to stand up for myself, taught me humor, got me fly, you know, kind of taught me how to dress. You know what I'm saying? And also is now even keeping me inspired as far as music is concerned. And so, um, but even on a more positive tip, because now, you know, I got a project coming out. My, my music is all about hustle. You know what I'm saying? It's all about getting up and fighting through whatever adversity you're facing and, and uh, defying the odds, you know what I'm saying? Like, bet on yourself, like. There we go. You know what I'm saying? When you wake up, it's time to go hard. Anytime you see the sun, it's time to go hard. Anytime you see the moon, it's time to go hard. Anytime you're breathing, it's just time to go harder. And that's what I want people to take away from when listening to my music. Just getting inspired to do something, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'll even, this will be the last one. Uh, I was diagnosed, I got asthma or had asthma, right? Got hit in the chest with a baseball as a kid and the doctors told my mom I'd never walk again. I'd never run again. I'd need an inhaler for the rest of my life. My mom promptly told him, we out and we left. Mm -hmm. She gave me my little inhaler, but she didn't let that be an excuse for me. 
you know what I'm saying? She sent me right outside with my inhaler and just said like, yo, if you find out you can't breathe, just take your inhaler, but you going outside. And it's stuff like that that I continue to think of about not letting certain outside fears and outside input, you know, dictate how you live your life. I want to live, so that's what I'm going to do, and that's what I want other people to do. I want to hustle. I want to fight for mine. I want to earn mine, and that's that's what the music is for. So, my whole life <laughs> is you know, is why. Yeah, you know why. what I took from that is like taking the risk. Take the risk. Take the risk take, every time. Take the inhaler with you, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> you know, real talk. Like take the risk. I've always been a risk taker. You know what I'm saying? Calculated, uncalculated. When I moved out here, I had thirty dollars. I spent 15 on my portion of an Uber to get my to my new crib. And the other 15 I lived off of until I just had to hit my mom like, yo, I need some bread. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, actually, she even bought my ticket. Shout out to my mama. You know what I'm saying? She bought my ticket. And um, yeah, I, she bought me a one way. I told her, I said, yo, I'm, I'm going to Los Angeles. And she was like, what? I was like, yeah, I can really do this music thing. So I'm gonna go. We've been talking to labels. We've been doing this, that, and the third. My mom hadn't heard my music. She hadn't. She didn't really know what I was doing, but she gave me the money, and I told her I'd get it right back to her. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so, um, so with that, you know, uh, just gotta. I lost my train of thought, but uh, yeah, you gotta take that risk. Take yeah. the risk every time. Take the risk. At the end of the day. When you understand that we're not here to lose and everything works for our good and there's no such thing as bad, you understand that everything is a learning opportunity. Either you win or you win big. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's it. So I don't I don't know what loss is. I don't know what fear is. I don't know what none of that is. We just Ooh, I don't know what loss is. Everything is a win. I love that. Yeah. Alexa said random question, but I love plants. So I'm curious. Do you name do you name them, talk to them, play music for them? Absolutely. Um, this is my White Birds of Paradise is Kubwa, which is Swahili for giant. My Monstera Deliciosa is named Philly. Uh, my red banana plant is named Celeste. Shout out to Celeste. Uh, my <laughs> Birds of Paradise is named Paradise. Uh, my three aloe plants are Selena, no, I'm sorry, Lauren, Lo, and Vera. And then my snake plant, it was only one, but now it's three. So that's Selena, Solano, and Carlos. <laughs> so <laughs> these are all my plants. Uh, and yeah, I, I talk to them all day. Like I, I spray them down with this water every morning. And I open the window so they can fully get what they need. Um, I, I definitely play frequencies for them. I play the 432. I play mainly the 528, though. That induces like positive stuff and growth and stuff like that. So I play it for myself while I'm drinking a smoothie. I play it for my boy back here so he can sleep and he be all peaceful and stuff. And uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I definitely talk to him. I talk to everything. I talk to myself. <laughs> everything. <laughs> everything a true I artist. Me, so. A yeah. true artist. So let's say positive energy. Oh, y'all, wow. Jasmine Blunt, LOL. How I didn't know you could speak like that. Jasmine love playing. <laughs> Shout out to Jasmine Blunt, man. She's been my dog since my second show at Vino's. After my set, I couldn't even really breathe. I was yelling so hard. And she walked right up to me and was like, I'm Jasmine Blunt. I run this thing called The Influence, and I want to talk to you. Ever since then, we've been locked in. You know what I'm saying? That's my dog. Yay. I love that. Um, yeah. Man, I wish people understood. Soul was really intelligent. And we need a podcast from you soon he say a lot of profound stuff like i have to take notes when we talk you uh paradox said being planted is potential energy we did talk about that earlier mother's love from celeste alexa love it latoria harris one of my favorite artists stay ready for new music and keep the others on rotation that's what i'm talking about support that's my aunt shout out to her. <laughs> <laughs> that's my dog man I met her when I was like that's my like one of my mom's uh that's my mom one of one of my mom's sisters and uh I met her when I was like 17 and she was so cool like <laughs> I had 18s this young you know what I'm saying that's my dog like 
I, I was hell wondering. <laughs> now that, she got it, my my cousin, my little cousin Deuce, man. Like she plays in my music. And he was like, the only thing I would say is stop cussing so much. <laughs> <laughs> Need a little feedback. Patrick yeah. said, Barry. Uh, thank y'all for staying tuned in with us. This is actually gone pretty long. I never had somebody well actually one other person to keep me this long so this has been really good um you just let me know when you're ready to go i actually got two more questions i definitely want to ask let's um, do that i get about the way all right so ooh, how important do you think it is to have art in our education system uh i think that's imperative it's imperative 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 mm -hmm. Um, at the end of the day, not everybody's going to be a scientist or a mathematician or a historian or um, a literary, whatever, like, you know what I'm saying? We're not, not everybody's cut that way. At the end of the day, you got dreamers that are in the education system who they're not there. They're not present in class. You know what I'm saying? Like the way things are structured and you wonder why some kids don't excel in school is because that, that certain structure is not built for them. Um, wow. that's a whole nother conversation but I think the arts is a great way to decompress you know what I'm saying we was in school man we write 10 page papers on top of history projects on top of and I've never been a good mathematician so like I'm struggling in pre-cal and I got a you know 10 page paper to write and plus a, a you know a book this big to read you know what I'm saying not saying it's impossible but at the end of the day I looked forward to uh, East Lab, you know, <laughs> East Lab. <laughs> like I looked forward to making music. I looked forward to figuring out something I really actually wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And so shout out to, to East End for even having that and shout out to the teachers that ran that class. But Mr. I think it's absolutely imperative, man, because uh, we just need it, man. You never know who you're, you're you, you, don't, you don't know who you're teaching. You don't know, you know, even our teachers were in a past life poets or, you know, mm -hmm. rock stars, you know, band members and things of that nature. So right. I think it's absolutely imperative. And I think without it, you do the children a huge disservice. And when kids, when kids can't focus, what do they say? The idle, idle hands are? The devil's playground? No. That. An idle mind? And I don't mind, whatever the case, the saying is just at the end of the day, you got some kids who just don't respond. And I appreciate even our principal at the time who knew that I wasn't responding to none of that. So she let me leave. And in me leaving, I got to go make music. I got to go write. I got to go create. You know what I'm saying? So um, definitely figure out how to keep, you know, arts in the school system, in education. And then teaching people, uh, all forms of art, understanding that art for one is always subjective. So to try to judge somebody on that is a no-go. But two, educate, you know what I'm saying? Educate the kids on, on where they come from on regional art, like Arkansas artists on, Little Rock artists on, you know, how music or the arts in general, how painting, how dance has changed, you know what I'm saying? A lot of stuff in this world. What they say sometimes, uh, I saw it the other day, Something about mistakes are made because the society doesn't listen to the poets or something like that. And I thought that was really dope. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just, you know, we just got to keep the arts in the system. Why would nobody, or why would you not want to have arts, you know what I'm saying, in the system? Like we got to, we got to let the kids express themselves in all ways too. You know what I'm saying? Like there's no right or wrong way to create your process is your process, whether that be interpretive dance whether that be beatboxing and making weird noises with your armpit, it's all art. You know what I'm saying? Like, just because it isn't the most profound doesn't mean it's not art. Uh, somebody years ago said, uh, rap is an acronym for retards attempting poetry, and I resent that statement. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never heard that one. I'm going to let it live, though, you feel me? But um, that's never the case. And you got to take the judgment out of art and appreciate it for what it is. That is an expression of somebody's intuitive being. And you gotta let that be. You know what I'm saying? So definitely have arts in the education system. Yes. And I think you definitely already touched on what my second, uh, what my other question was gonna be. Uh, do you feel like art was, you know, 
um, emphasized for you in school. Romar said, happy birthday. Oh, today is Solo's birthday. So happy birthday. Shout out. That's my brother. <laughs> Romar. That's my brother, man. Shout out to Romar, man. He's been around since I've known some of my, like before I know. Matter of fact, he was around before I knew my Aunt Tori. Like he's been around since 97, you know, playing with my sister through thick and thin. Shout out to Big Bro. He done taught me a lot. He threw me in a pool, made me learn how to swim. <laughs> Sometimes you need to push. Matter of fact, him and one of my cousins are the first people to put me in the studio and they just gave me the microphone and gave me some headphones and I just cussed for like 10 straight minutes. It was wow. great. I thought I was, I thought I was that dude, so. <laughs> Yeah. Ra Howard said, "Keep doing your thing, bro. You're so talented, fam." That's love, bro. Thank you, thank you. Alexa, happy birthday. Patrick said, "Happy King Day solo." All right, now. Sorry, I don't know that, but I do have a skill you might like. It's called Happy Birthday Song. Want to try it, Alexa? Uh oh, my Alexa being nosy. <laughs> So, um, Almer Jackson, happy birthday, son. Great interview. Oh. My dad. <laughs> That's my pops. Hey. Shout out to him, too, man. As a parent, I'm sure every, every parent has an idea of where they want their kids to go. And when their kids kind of veer off, they feel some type of way. As far as my mom is concerned, you know what I'm saying? She had a little pushback, you know what I'm saying? But I love her for that, you know what I'm saying? She's always been devil's advocate for lack of a better word and i appreciate that because she's taught me how to you know what i'm saying stand on what i want uh, but as far as my pop goes you know what i'm saying he definitely ain't never had no judgment you know what i'm saying he's if i'm if i'm doing it he likes it so <laughs> okay thank you um that's that's beautiful 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 um i promise you i will let you go in a second i actually wanted to to name some of your favorite Arkansas artist? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Right. Look, check me out. Forget about this part. Like, we have so much talent here. Like, look, all right, so real quick, man, because I got to get this haircut and stuff. But look, it's a lot of people that don't like mentioning certain names in this state. It's about your heart, OK? Um, we're here for y'all. Gunde Garcon from Pine Bluff. That's my dog. That's been the guy who got me on my first show, got me on all my Arkansas shows. He showed love. First time we met, we made no reason. You know what I'm saying? Um, pioneer of going for what you want and you know putting on for your state. So shout out to Gunde Garcon. Uh, doing shows for the kids that we never had a violent show. You know what I'm saying? When they put the ban on hip hop shows in Arkansas, it hurt us to the core because we would we tried so hard to make sure that the kids of all ages had safe spaces to come to to make music because of him. Uh, my brother, Idol Kid, not even kid no more, Idol. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he's all from he's from around. He moved a lot, so he's from he's from Little Rock, but from different parts of Little Rock. When we first came up, that's my that's me and Goons like go to producer. You know, saying so that's little bro, a madman as far as production goes. You know what I'm saying? We went to school together, like, yeah. see him grow up and to see him blossom and <clears throat> who he is today, I'm gonna see him later today. It's a blessing to be able to witness that, you know what I'm saying? So Gunde Garçon, Idol. Um, another artist from home. Um, uh, it's so many, like my whole gang, you know what I'm saying? Like from Tana Terra, Ian Easton, Fresco Gray, Reggie Gold, School, Carrie Foe, Black Party, those are two pioneers too, Carry For and Black Party, you know what I'm saying? Uh, they they were kind of some of the pioneers for us, you know what I'm saying? I didn't really listen to a lot of local music growing up because I did not want to be just known as an Arkansas artist. I wanted to play on the world stage. But between Carry For, Black Party, and Goon Day Garçon so far, they have shown us, as far as like the younger generation goes, um, how to how to really go get it, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to the to the generation before us, the 607s, the, um, I'm going blank again, but y'all know who y'all are, you know what I'm saying? Shout out for paving the way for, for us 
and passing that torch on the, you know, to us to let us, you know, rock out how we wanted to. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, shout out to the gang, shout out to the homies, shout out to everybody that's even there hustling. We got, we still got so many young artists. We got Alexis Ray Parker, who's an amazing singer and rapper. You got A1 Nino, you know what I'm saying, went to school with him. You got D Mitch, shout out to him. You got all of these, you know, Fast 400. You got all of these different, even the R&B, like Mac Royals, you know what I'm saying? That's my dog, went to middle school together. Shout out to my boy. We used to kick it out here. We used to thug it out here. We'd have been through a lot together. So shout out to my boy. Um, it's just, you know what I'm saying? This is, Arkansas is a, is a very creative place. We just don't have it a spotlight yet. And as long as we continue to work towards that, we're gonna get it, you know what I'm saying? We just got a lot of work to do and I'm fine with that. Um, so shout out to all of us and all of y'all. <laughs> to all y'all all that yes y'all make sure y'all um follow solo jackson and some of the artists that he named but so to lead us out of here if you could give any up and coming artist some advice and let us know how they can reach out to you and we'll finish it out like that last one shout out to blue from the south end uh that's one of my favorite rappers coming out right now but to any up and coming artist man look go for what you know man listen to your intuition Mm -hmm. Whether it be positive or negative feedback, take it all with a grain of salt. At the end of the day, wow. saying you got to do what's best for you. Um, stay motivated. It's going to be hard some days, and you're going to question whether or not you should be doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But it all shows up in the watch. You know what I'm saying? This is not made for the faint of heart. It's not made for the weak, but it can be done. So if you believe in yourself, then I believe in you. You know what I'm saying? And uh, stay focused. Stay focused. And don't be a hater. That's it. <laughs> Most important thing. <laughs> well, thank you so well for tuning in with us. You definitely dropped some gems. I'm so proud of you. And I just think, you know, you're going to go far above and beyond. Um, you are an inspiration and a great talent. So you have a good day. Enjoy your birthday. Happy birthday again. Happy um, birthday again. Appreciate it. <laughs> all right, have a good one. All right, I'll catch y'all later. This part is always weird. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just leave. So <laughs> bye. <laughs> so everybody that did tune in, thank you for tuning in again. Make sure you share this video. Um, this is our bi-weekly Art on Arkansas interview. Today we have Solo Jackson, who is from Little Rock, Arkansas, but is now living in Los Angeles. California pursuing his recording artist career full time. Super excited for him. So thank you all for tuning in. Um, be sure if you have anybody that you would want to recommend to be on Art on Arkansas, you can always email me at drinka.morning at arkansas.gov for your um with your recommendations or you can inbox me or even comment comment their names here but definitely i am always looking for suggestions and ways to highlight any artist in arkansas or from arkansas but again thank you all for tuning in have a blessed day